What's up, YouTube? Today we're gonna look at how to use blockchain in another way other than using it as a currency. There's a lot of people out there that think that cryptocurrency is the only way blockchain can be used. So I wanted to take this time to take a look at other use cases where blockchain can add some real value to existing technology. And I'll compare it to how we use silver in very different ways. A lot of stackers recognize silver as a currency, just like this 50 cent piece, because it used to be a currency and was for many years. And that's the first way that people think of it. While other people who don't know much about silver will, won't even recognize the silver content in this half dollar piece, and it doesn't matter to them. They'll just treat it as 50 cents, only as a currency. In a second, we're gonna take a look at other ways that silver is used in industrial ways. and. Really, that's kind of my point, is that silver can be used in more ways than one, and blockchain can be used more ways than one, even though it's recognized for certain things. In this way, we're gonna look at some practical ways to actually use the technology. So looking at these silver bars, they're all sort of different in very different ways, including this iPhone. But if you consider the amount of silver in the iPhone compared to the other three, which one has more value in today's market? Another use is in this Katadyne where it has a silver lined ceramic filter to filter out all the nasty stuff out of water. Silver itself has a lot of properties. I'm not gonna repeat a lot of them, but for medical uses, it's an antibacterial. For electronics, it's a great conductor of electricity that can be used in the iPhone and in solar cells and is highly reflective. So that's just the start of what silver is capable of doing. And similar to Ethereum, the technology behind it being blockchain with some added features like a smart contract, which allows it to do some extra things other than just being tied to a currency. And this is where things get a little bit fuzzy because Ethereum is supposed to be used as a token to use a service more so than a currency. Instead, it's being used as a speculation tool to get rich. The people who got in early, say last year, were definitely ahead of the curve and what they call smart money because they believed in the technology and ultimately invested heavily when there was nothing there. But now what we see is we see a lot of people entering the market who have no idea what the technology does or what it's capable of doing, just putting money in for the sake of making money very fast. So you can't really blame stackers who think that it's a Ponzi scheme and you know people who shouldn't be making money are making money. And although I'm bullish on the technology, I know that there's gonna be an end to what's currently happening. I have my thoughts, but I'll share that on another video. Let's take a look at these wallets. And earlier I mentioned that there's currency and ID to within a wallet, and they're essentially the same thing with a digital wallet and your physical wallet. So let's take a look at some use cases like real estate, where you can take advantage of the immutability and the permanence of blockchain. When you close on a property, a lot of the time spent is looking up documentation and looking up records. With records moved to blockchain and proof of ownership on the block where it's available and queryable quickly, then this will speed up the entire real estate process. There's also fewer mistakes if you use automated smart contracts that will release funds or release title once funds hit the contract and then change the ownership to the new, new ID and it would be immediately available on public ledger in the blockchain for everyone to see. Another example is voter registration where you issue a token when someone registers to vote and only that person can use that token and once it's burned, it's burned. There's also a permanent record of the vote that's immediately auditable. Auditing is one of the most powerful features of blockchain because it ensures accuracy and security. This is one of the reasons why banks are adopting it so quickly because it'll decrease the amount of man hours to actually need to reconcile this because it can be done all automatically with a computer. So say for instance, the Pentagon used cryptocurrency to fill out all their contracts. We wouldn't have lost $6 billion a year or any amount of money. All money would be accountable and traceable within the government. Now let's look at how tokens can be used as access control tokens instead of currency. So let's say your medical records are on the blockchain for HIPAA compliance. And one of the reasons why you would want your records on blockchain 
is because you can control who has access to that record at any given time. Typically, if you're a member of the proper group, then you have access to all the records that group has access to. But using tokens, you can only take out as many tokens as you need to look up the records that you need to look at, which means that you can't look at other things or you burn a token. So now, even though I have access, it's hard for me to look at someone else's record that I'm not supposed to because I would be out of balance. I wouldn't be able to look at the records that I needed to because I burned them on things that I wasn't supposed to. So this is where it helps with access control and because of the immutable history, it means that I can't change my, the records after the fact. So even if I had control of the database, it would still show my ID accessing that file. So if I had 80 visitors scheduled for that day, I should be requesting 80 tokens and approved for 80 tokens, which I can use for 80 records for those 80 visitors. Anything out of balance would be automatically detected and sent an alarm. This way, all medical records could stay encrypted and the token itself is used to unencrypt or decrypt the medical record I'm supposed to be looking at. This is an example for business use or industrial use or even government use, where most likely they'll have a private chain. Right now, I'm not sure what general purpose idea will make it big in the market. I, I don't know that, but these are just some areas that it'll help right away. And it serves a real purpose of uh, blockchain or a, a real use case because it's security, authentication, and authorization. Let me know what you think of this vid in the comment section below. And here's a little scoop of what's in for the next blockchain video. We're going to look at some transactions and how to go through and interpret it. So please comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.